for this long introduction. And uh, apologies, guys, for the glitch and the 15 minute delay. It's because uh, because of the you know protests and all in the city. We are also live streaming. I'm told this morning, right? So we just set it up. And uh, good morning to everyone, and hello to our online viewers as well. So I'll be talking about AI-driven UX, the future of OTT platforms. And uh, you know, I used to assume that everyone of us is aware of what OTT is, but I interacted with Evelina this morning, and uh, she wasn't aware. So I'll just for those of you who are not aware, OTT stands for over the top. And basic, basically, all the content platforms that you use every day, Netflix, Amazon Prime, they are uh, categorized as OTT platforms. So my talk would uh, revolve around how we can leverage uh, and use AI technology to elevate the user experience for OTT platforms, right? But before that, I'll uh, quickly give you an introduction about my background. So currently, as I've been introduced, I'm working as uh, an associate director of experience design at To The New. To The New is a digital uh, transformation services organization based out of Noida, Delhi NCR. And uh, what we do is we provide digital consultancy and uh, products, which is uh, mobile apps and uh, web apps, to our clients across the world. We have offices in six countries and we are headquartered in Noida. I am also the founder and editor in chief of Design Mind magazine, which is a digital magazine for UX professionals. The idea is to bring the community together and to feature stories which are not technical in nature and are more uh, sort of uh, issue based. So, for example, like we will have stories of someone who transitioned into UX design and is self taught from being, uh, uh, you know, from a totally different background of being a lawyer or a doctor. So those kind of stories are featured in the magazine. And then I have a background of working with Accenture, Global Logic, and Nagaro. Overall, I have about uh, 13 years of experience, more than 13 years actually. But I'm still learning, I would say, because we are in an uh, you know, ever-evolving industry and uh, technologies and things change every six months or so, right? All right. So with that, I will uh, quickly move on to the discussion points for this talk. Initially, we'll talk about how OTT has risen over the years, and particularly in India. Then we'll talk about uh, the rise of AI, especially in the last one year or so after Chat GPT. And then we'll bring these two together. We'll see how we at Do the New have uh, you know, uh, come up with a framework to provide OTT services to our clients and are also leveraging the use of AI technology. And then we'll talk a bit about what's in store for the future, right? Right, so uh, now we've all seen that OTT basically rose to prominence. Uh, and when I'm talking about OTT and AI, I'm particularly talking about the Indian subcontinent, right? So around uh, lockdown, the COVID-19 lockdown in March 2020, where, where everybody was sort of, uh, you know, under a house arrest, OTT platforms suddenly rose to prominence and everybody was subscribing to Netflix, Amazon Prime, Sony and whatnot, right? So th this is some statistics here, which uh, show that ODD is, uh, you know, rising at a staggering rate and every three years, the rate kind of doubles. So in 2023, we are sitting at uh, $240 billion, but in 2026, we are expected to rise to $486 billion. That's almost a uh, double of 240, right? What leads to these, uh, this, this rise in OTT? Like I said, one is COVID-19 lockdown in India, but there are other factors as well. There is uh, affordable and high-speed internet access. Now we have you know, mobile phone and 4G to every nook and corner of the country. Then smartphones and smart TVs have also become very affordable, right? So you get a smart TV anywhere around uh, 15 to 20,000 rupees now. So there's like, affordance across the country of both these things, which has given rise to OTT platforms. Similarly, uh, AI has risen over the last one year or so, especially when ChatGPT launched and uh, they had these API services which the developers could use to extend their uh, frameworks and make use of uh, ChatGPT in general, right? Again, here we are uh, expected to double in uh, billion dollars in market size. It's expected to double every three years or so. 
2023, we are at $538 billion. But by 2026, we'll be almost $900 billion. And there's a stark contrast here. So in 2023, AI is already uh, almost double the size of OTT, right? It's at 538, while uh, in 2023, OTT stands at $240 billion. So AI is huge and ODD is still rising. And now is the perfect time to bring them together. Now, what has uh, led to the rise of AI? Like I said, chat GPTs, especially their API services that make make uh, you know make its services uh, extensible by, by use of API and the developers can use to extend, modify and uh, make use of their engine in any way they want. And there have been some algorithmic innovations and computational infrastructure uh, advances as well, right? Okay, so now we look at Video Ready, which is an in house platform uh, created by To the New R uh, Digital Services Organization, which brings these two technologies together to elevate the user experience and also to maintain the business requirements and uh, give the business uh, opportunities to the clients, right? So what is Video Ready? Video Ready is to the news framework of flexible, extensible, and reusable uh, uh, sort of components that help and build you know, uh, an OTT platform for our clients. So what that basically means is the client just have to upload their content library and they have a ready-made system which can be white, white labeled according to their needs, right? So that gives them a faster time to market and uh, the features, among the many features that we have, most of them are AI powered with, with use of AI technology and overall because it's all ready made and uh, it takes hardly any time to go to the market, overall it sort of uh, leads to lower cost of ownership, right? Now what is the ultimate objective of uh, building an ODD platform from a user designer's perspective? I would say that it's like uh, maintaining, you know, one factor is of course uh, that we have to give the users a splendid experience, right? That is obviously there. We have to cater to the user's needs. But also we have to give the business opportunities to our clients and uh, offer them much more avenues that are, that are normally provided so that they can also make money on the site, right? So this is what we cater to with video ready, we balance the business needs as well as the user needs. This is how it looks like, uh, this is a quick snapshot of the admin interface of the video ready. Like I said, uh, the client can just upload their content library and uh, they have a dashboard where we can see <clears throat> what kind of content they have across all genres, the number of users, how many are active, how many are premium users and all sort of stuff, right? All right, so, but particularly talking about uh, among many features, the features that are powered by AI are these five features that I'll be talking about uh, in subsequent slides. One is emotion analysis, then we have AI powered product placement, a very brilliant feature that gives business opportunities uh, for our clients in very subtle and remarkable ways. Then contextual ad breaks, thumbnail and preview automation, which is uh, really a pain. Uh, any of you content uh, creators here would know that to create thumbnails and innovative uh, previews, it takes a hell lot of effort, right? So we automate that with video ready. And then a benchmarks. Now let us look at these features one by one. Emotion analysis. So now what we do is that uh, any content that we have in our framework, we just feed it to our AI algorithm and it reads the content by way of reading the transcript of, of the video, be it a web series or a movie. And then it kind of categorizes and tags them based on the keywords that it encounters in the transcript. So if the video has a lot of uh, references to ambulance and uh, you know, gun firing and all, so it will tag and categorize it as a violent or a gore movie or, or you know, an action genre and so on, right? So what this leads to is it gives us uh, enough power to have great categories you know, across a ton of content that we have and then we can use those categories and taggings to elevate the user experience by way of offering them some personalized content and so on. It also helps in sort of reaching a, you know, a 
in, in uh, making diverse content reach to a larger audience. So, for example, regional movies, which otherwise do you know get seen only by people of that region, will be able to reach a wider audience. Let's see how. So, how it works is, let's say uh, we have a movie called Ex Machina, and it is uh, you know fed into the system. It quickly uh, it happens in a matter of minutes or maybe seconds sometimes. It quickly analyzes the movie's content and it creates mood tags and mood categories and also genres and some keywords, right? Based on this, across the library, it is able to generate similar titles. So what happens is, just like we have an experience design, a uh, customer journey mapping or, or uh, sort of a mood mapping of the user's journey across digital uh, products, we get a mapping of all our content library. So, if you see what what you're seeing on screen is like uh, you know video by video, movie by movie, we have a mood sort of mapping of all the content. So, for example, uh, we know that a range you know it can be organized by way of uh, uh, mood levels. So, for example, all the enjoyment movies, if you see, are at the top, and as we go down, we have some movies with elements of fear and indifference and sadness, right? Across each movie as well we can see what scenes and which uh, sort of time frames cater to what mood level, right? So for in the first movie, for example, Dump and Dumper, you'll see that there are more elements of enjoyment, but in the middle, there is some sadness, right? And then it again picks up to, to, to give more enjoyment elements. While uh, in Rain Man, it's kind of divided. It begins with some anticipation. There are elements of enjoyment. It goes back to anger and anticipation. There are some elements of sadness as well, and uh, finally it ends with uh, enjoyment uh, elements, right? So now this is very powerful. What we can uh, do as UX designers is make use of this mood mapping of all our content and use this to kind of personal give personalized recommendations. We can give recommendations of content that aligns with the mood of the user. Now, of course, it will happen over a period of time when we sort of track what users are viewing and we have some data around that, then we can offer some better recommendations. So how it works is, let's say uh, a you know, user has been viewing some depressing movies for a while, we can say, hey, we see that you're you know, feeling a little low, how about we cheer you up? And then we offer them content which are tagged with uh, elements of enjoyment. Again, uh, we can further empower the user by giving the control in the user's hand. So we can say, I am feeling blue, by default it will be set to blue, and it could be a drop down. The user has the power to further get more depressed and watch more blue movies. By blue movies, I mean depressing movies, by the way. Or, or uh, if they want to get uh, sort of a you know, cheerful mode, they can pick and select from the drop down and uh, uh, click on the relevant. Uh, selection, right? Then, based on who we are watching the content with, this is another sort of uh, indirect uh, mood mapping uh, helps us in this. So if we are alone, we are in a different kind of a mood, right? Where, uh, whereas if we are watching it with a family, we are in a different kind of a mood. So all this mood mapping, categorization and tagging helps us in offer content to the user. Uh, and make some personalized recommendations. We can also use this to give them some more power and to sort of give them, uh, you know, content trigger warnings. So, for example, if we know the movie by and large has elements of enjoyment, but there is a bit of scene uh, where there's a bit of gore and violence, maybe we can, we can give them a warning, right? So, you know, what the, the sequence that you're about to witness or watch is, is uh, gore or, or violent in nature. And uh, whether you wish to proceed or you wish to skip that time frame altogether. Then, uh, time duration based videos as well. Suppose a user has a, you know, is waiting in the airport lounge and has a flight to catch in the next one hour or so, then they'll be in a mood to watch shorter videos. So, if the user selects videos under 30 minutes, maybe we can make an assumption that they are in a hurry and they might be. Uh, in a mood to watch some adventurous or upbeat movies or videos, right? And we can offer that. Similarly, an indirect way of uh, tagging users' mood or, or making a sort of note of their viewing habits is when we find out that they have a particular uh, 
star which is their favorite right we can give them more power by giving them combinations right so i want to watch a movie and i like chemistry of shahrukh khan and kajol as a couple right so i can only be shown uh, videos that feature both these stars all right the next feature that we have in video ready it's now this is a very powerful feature like i said earlier it's product placement so now product placement helps in generating revenue for us and uh, currently how it's done is you know a movie is shot and an advertisement is kind of uh, inserted into it and it remains there with the video throughout the lifetime of the video right but with ai power what uh, we have done with video ready is we are introducing subtle advertising and some flexibility in campaign running which is all based on data driven insights i'll show a video to you guys quickly so uh, this is how uh, you know video ready kind of uh, so we feed a video here and this is tvf's uh, cubicles web series and the video is read by the ai uh, engine and as the video is played it gives us uh this slot automatically that there is an ad opportunity between the time frame 1630 to 1845 and it automatically kind of uh you know opens up what products could be advertised in this given time slot so there is an option of of an iphone or a coke ad placement right now let's move ahead and uh put coke advertisement in this time frame suggested by ai so as we move ahead here we click on uh, go and we select it to apply now if we go here in the same scene in the same scene you would see now a coke can suddenly placed into the frame earlier it wasn't there by just way of one click we can uh let me let me go back and show you it wasn't placed earlier uh sorry about this sluggish video so so in the same scene earlier there was nothing but by just one click now we can place a coke can so this is subtle advertising and also it's flexible because the coke can hasn't been placed there at the time of shooting right so we can always remove the coke can when the campaign runs out so that that gives more power to create business opportunities as well as it kind of elevates the user experience because the user is not bogged down by uh, mindless product placements and it can only be there as long as the campaign is run now furthermore this ad campaign can be further targeted uh to our selected demographics by gender age groups or location so this is what we have created by using the uh, you know use of ai technology in video ready this is pretty powerful right but now we have more uh video ready can also create contextual ad breaks and what that means is users are always interested in seeing this viewing right and we want them uh, we want to increase the engagement rate with our uh, uh, you know content on these ott platforms and we want to create a positive brand perception for our products so what our uh, engine does is it reads uh, these video content that we feed into it and it automatically detects the most uh, optimum locations for placing advertisements and it also ranks these ad breaks and there is a scene level or a mood metadata right so it understands the video so it knows if there is a grim scene or if there is a tragic scene maybe there is time to insert an advertisement to kind of uplift the mood of the audience so we are more engaged to watch the rest of the content it also does a scene analysis which is basically it reads the transcript and it is able to analyze what scene you know and what what is the mood uh, and dialogue and action going on in the scene and based on that it creates a ranking of our advertisement and maybe we could charge them accordingly the other feature of this is it does a seamless storyline integration so for example the ai system would be able to understand that a character is maybe drinking a beverage like i am right now 
that is not related to the talk that I am giving. Uh, so it will seamlessly and suddenly, you know, uh, it can insert a refreshing beverage advertisement in there. And the user doesn't even get to know. Or even if it if he gets to know, uh, it's it's seamless, so it's not obstructed. Then uh, we have a ranking created by the AI of all the ad slots, and uh, <clears throat> based on that, we can charge our uh, you know the, the advertisers uh, based on the ranking created by the AI engine. All right. Then we have a feature of thumbnail and review automation. Again, when we feed our content into the AI uh, framework, it's able to sort of auto-generate some thumbnails and previews uh, for our video content. And now this helps us save time and money in uh, creating thumbnails and, uh, and uh, previews because it takes a lot of effort and uh, uh, many people have to work really hard for it. And it's not randomly generated. The AI system is able to identify the characters and the scene, and based on that, it understands what is the premise of the movie, what is uh, what are the important characters in the movie, and it's able to create previews and thumbnails based on that. So, for example, uh, let's say we feed a movie into it, it understands what is the main character, and it will have a snapshot with that main character into the uh, in, in the movie and a preview clip of the most important scene of the movie so that it generates interest and the user is kept to watch the whole movie. So for example, if we feed uh, the Jataya Bollywood movie into it, it will understand it's about three uh, best friends and it will capture a screenshot from a movie which has all those three characters in the scene rather than creating a, a video clip, uh, you know, randomly. Alright, so uh, it, it, again, it also analyzes the mood and appearance and so for an upbeat movie, it will only create thumbnails which have an upbeat uh, uh, you know, tonality and it goes with the theme of the movie, even though there might be some elements of uh, tragedy in the movie. It evaluates body language expressions of the characters and it, uh, is able to so, sort of, you know, pick and select the best frame for thumbnail and reviews. Then like I said, it's character centric and it understands scene by scene what's being talked about in the scene and create based on that. Then uh, finally we have binge markers. So all of us are, you know, we have been binge watchers uh, every now and then uh, if, if an interesting web series or a movie comes up, right? So with binge marker, when we feed our content to the engine, it is able to automatically identify the segments for uh, you know, uh, for for putting up some uh, invokers for the users to take action, it makes the more uh, you know the content more digestible, and it gives us the power to sort of give them more interactions uh, for the user. So, for example, let's say we feed Dexter uh, the web series into the system, it understands the time frames where there is an intro, where the intro stops where the end credits have started and where is where there is a recap, right? So based on that, we can give some cues to the user to maybe skip an intro or, you know, if, if the end credits are rolling, maybe go to another episode or skip recap and also offer other engagement, uh, you know, sort of uh, interactions for the user. It also understands segment, segment length optimization and uh, Using this data, we can uh, sort of uh, you know, improve the experience of uh, the binge watching viewers. Then, overall, making use of this leads to reduce viewer fatigue and content uh, engagement is increased by leaps and bounds. All right, now, with now that we have looked at what's in the present and what we are making use of to enhance the experience of OTT platforms. Let's look at uh, what's possible in the future. Now, this will be very quick because my time is running out as I'm told. Right, so uh, <clears throat> in the future, we'll have hyper-personalization. So now, like I said, currently OTT and AI especially is very young, right? So we don't have that kind of user data. But over the years, uh, when we have 
years and years of data of the users you will have it you'll be able to offer them some hyper personalized recommendations right you'll be able to understand that this uh, viewer use certain kind of content during let's say the beginning of the month and then goes on to watch different kinds of content and maybe by month end he reduces uh, his content consumption overall right so based on of this data analysis we can offer them some hyper personalized uh, recommendations then now we are at the moment we are using ai technology to understand the content that we have and in turn uh, to use that uh, data to you know increase the user experience but in the future we might also have some ai uh, created content just like we have you know prompt based ai created images right now that could be possible with the videos as well in the future then immersive technology is something that's sure shot to have to be there in the future we already have uh, apple releasing the vision pro plus in the coming months and with immersive technologies we could make use of uh, headsets like vision pro plus to further enhance the experience of the users and make it a three dimensional or even uh, you know beyond that for the viewers then social integration currently it stands at a bare minimum there is amazon prime's you know watch party and but it's a you know it's it's a sluggish interface it's not that used but we could uh, in the future maybe use make use of immersive technology and further enhance it and maybe we could all watch it remotely and yet feel like we are in the same room with our friends and then uh, there is also possibility of making way for a greener planet and making use of technology which is uh, green in nature and planet friendly so this is a very quick glimpse uh, into the future and now i am open for any questions or thoughts that you might have My name is Abhay. I have a question regarding your comments actually. So you said the protagonist in the series would be analyzed, right? You would get some options. So I'm just asking that in case of multi-star things or things, will there be an option where you can drop different comments and just suggest or recommend this option that you could come? Thank you, what's your name again? Hi, Amit. Thank you for the question. Yeah, so uh, like you said, we currently have that ability to combine. So it gives us various options when it auto generates thumbnails. And then ultimately, the power lies with us to sort of merge, mix, and match those thumbnails. And sometimes, you know, the problems that we run into is let's say a star has a guest appearance in a movie. Now, because they have a guest appearance, a cameo, the AI does not really understand that. That star power will, you know, be able to capture the audience's attention. So it does not sometimes generate those kind of thumbnails, and then we have to manually merge with the auto-generated ones. So yes, that is possible, and the ultimate power lies with us. Uh, so uh, while you were telling that signal and uh, with battery or power or those things, uh, let us say uh, there's some content which uh, has certain parts. Which may not be, you know, uh, like you know, the entire group can can't watch together as a family with kids. So can that skip, you know, like that part of the movie could be skipped uh, just to, you know, uh, understand the better. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, I I give an example of there being a content trigger warning. So that was exactly that. If by and large the movie is of, uh, you know, it's it's family oriented, but there are certain scenes that are objectionable in nature. There could be a content warning. We could insert that if we uh, you know, enable it, and then the user has the power to skip it and move to the next. Scene. Thank you for the question. Yes, sir. And I was curious about the last slide about Amazon predictions. How can we use this kind of immersive technology to be eco-friendly and sustainable? Can you give me an example that would help? Hi, uh, what was your name again? I'm sorry. Hi, Sulika, thank you. That's a good question, like they all say. But, and you know, I'm not entirely sure how it could be done, but we currently have some uh, websites already doing that. And what they do is they are able to understand uh, the power consumption of a viewer based on their screen settings 
or the more that they are viewing it in some OTT platforms have a dark mode or a light mode, right? Dark mode consumes lesser energy. And based on that, they automatically adjust uh, the platform's uh, sort of visibility preferences. And now the user already, uh, you know, obviously has the option to override those uh, preferences, but they can be auto set in a bit to generate and consume less energy. So there are websites, and uh, I forget the name, but uh, you know, I can give you a link. And there is a website which understands that this, uh, you know, the ISP that I am viewing it on is not very, uh, you know, planet friendly, and it automatically reduces it, its images quality and uh, renders a black and white version of the pictures to the viewer in a bit to save some uh, energy consumption. It does, and like I said, uh, see there are pros and cons, and we don't really understand how we can move to a cleaner planet, but these are just baby steps to it. Thank you. So many uh, questions, so maybe I'll take the... Uh, I'll come to you. My name is Sinanda. So, is there any concern that you need to take from the movie director uh, that, that, that could actually uh, purposely create to it and uh, the objects are this? Right? Thank you, uh, Janadhan. So, yeah, that, that, that understanding is already. So, we are only feeding the content where we have an, uh, you know, uh, where we have an agreement with the video maker as well as the uh, sponsor, right? That we need to put some content here. And this feature is. Uh, primarily used by the movie makers who are interested in getting their movie sponsored by a by an advertiser. So they are the primary users of it, and uh, they are the ones who suggest to the advertisers that these are the slots that we can place your product. There are any like you can place anything that you can place beer bottle also. So is there any restriction for uh, that uh, product that can be placed? For so you're asking if the if video editing the system is able to sort of uh, you know be in those bounds, right? No, no, currently no. So it is up to the discretion of the video makers and the sponsors what content you know, and it has to be within the bounds of the country's laws and social norms. Yeah, but AI, yeah, AI wouldn't really uh, have the power to understand that currently. Yeah, but it's up to the discretion of the content creators and advertisers. Any questions on where came from? I come to you. Hey, I'm I just want to know, like, you showed uh, how a user could get results for their specific interests. Can you change those interests? Is it possible for you to subtly move towards something that you want to achieve in it? Yes, yes. In, in like user preferences and settings, there will always be methods to override things that are being created and uh, recommended by AI. And it already uh, is there in our system. So that's there. There's, an, there's always going to be an option to override what AI does. So, as you said that, uh, you know, we can uh, feed the content in AI and it will uh, read everything, including uh, all the content that the actors are moving. Uh, uh, let's imagine we are, you know, doing this for 10 years and we have a lot of data regarding everything. Is it possible that in future we could, you know, just create a movie including these two actors with this sound? Well, in the far future, I'm sure it would be. I'm not really and a technologist, so... Uh, does that mean it will take all the film industry? Because uh, I work in you know uh, advertising right now, and I'm you know like curious that uh, if we can uh, use this in that content, if we understand the content, can we use that in advertising for creating this uh, kind of you know advertising advertisement for a uh, specific? I'm content? sure at an advertisement level, it is definitely possible because the characters have to be generic in nature, right? And not all advertisements uh, have stars or recognizable faces. 
right? So I'm pretty sure that's really possible in the coming future because we already have AI generated images and all. Mm -hmm. But about your question of there being uh, movies which feature well-established stars, I really cannot comment, but maybe it's possible, and but it will have its pros and cons. Not sure about that. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, hi, I had a question. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh. So, um, emotions are pretty subjective, right? So, how, and they can change everything. How can we make an experience uh, which is which is not very intrusive and asks us every time we go on ODT how we are feeling and uh, plays us and then according to, like, is there? Anything that you have researched or thought about that, like coming. You mean uh, for viewers who, uh, who are coming yeah. on OTT? So every day we have a different kind of emotion. Right? So how do we make that experience better? I think I showed an example wherein uh, you know there was a drop down of, of mood emotion, and the yeah. user could pick and choose from that drop down. So uh, by default, with the data that we have, we set it to something. Let's say person only watches comedy movies, so we set it default to comedy. But the user has an option to pick and select. Maybe they are in a grim mood, so they can select a non-comedy and you know, click on grim and select that content. So, uh, that was my issue, like, we selected blue, but what kind of content will it show? Will it show me that uh, some uh, videos that will cheer me up or similar kind of content? How will the person then further choose that? Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that depends on uh, yeah. So the AI would do both. Uh, if they are interested in watching further uh, grim movies, they get you know that could be suggested as well. But it is up to us uh, as user experience designers how we would design it and how we want to uh, you know uh, give the options to the user. So that's a good question actually. You know genuinely because. Uh, there is a there are two two ways uh, you know we can take one is to further uh, you know give them similar content or content that is very in nature and kind of uplifts or you know uh, makes a mood switch for the user. Just to add on to what Rajesh said, uh, you mentioned uh, that there is also the option to further suggest feeling sad for the user somebody is feeling sad. Or upset. Um, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with making such a decision. Like if someone, if through the content that someone is watching, we're able to recognize that they're not in a good place. Further, maybe suggesting sad movies could have some repercussions and could lead to some very extreme situations because some of these movies don't really have uh, resolutions at the end of it. They have sad endings. Um, so that could you know, influence the world's um, documents. So how does a plan, like how do you uh, kind of address the responsibility? Because it's not a human making that decision, it's the app. So who would take that So again, I would say that uh, AI is just, uh, just has that data to uh, sort of, you know, uh, give to us. But ultimately the decision lies with us as designers how we make use of the data. So AI would give us data that this viewer has been watching a lot of film movies over the past uh, couple of months, right? And now we as UX designers have the power to make use of data to offer them something that is totally opposite to the mood of what they've been watching. Or so AI doesn't really create an interface. All it does in, in Video Ready, it gives us lots and lots of data that help us analyze the viewing patterns of our audience and then we can pick and choose what we place on the home screen and how we offer content.